All right, welcome to part two of the Holly Terminator X software overview. Uh, in the last uh, video, we went over sort of the basics, how to load uh, global config files, and we started working in, you know, how, what are these um, icons up here, the, the various ICFs, and we covered a lot of the details of the system ICF here. Um, I already have the same config file loaded here for this example, and I want to make this video pretty short. Um, I got good response on the last video, so I want to go through these as quickly as possible. The next ICF that I want to cover, and again, ICF stands for Individual Configuration File, is the Sensor ICF. And this is where you would go in and define what kind of sensors you're using on your engine. Now, obviously, the Terminator X is designed for to be used with LS-based engines, whether it's Gen 3 or Gen 4. Um, so a lot of these sensors are going to be very common to the sensors that are already installed on those engines. So let's go through these one by one. The first one that we have here is the map sensor. Now the Terminator X, as you might have heard, already comes with a manifold air pressure sensor built in. Now this is a one bar sensor. Um, which means it's designed for naturally aspirated applications. So if you're just running a naturally aspirated engine, that's all you need to do. You need to run a vacuum hose from your manifold over to the little nipple that's in the hose that's inside the Terminator X computer, and you're all set, and you would select the internal one bar. You're all set there. Now other people, if they're running boost or they're running any number of other manifold air pressure sensors, Holly has built in a, a wide variety of available sensors. So they list the Holly sensors, which they also list the part numbers here. So it's very easy for you to, to uh, go through and see what you got. So for instance, if you're running a two bar, uh, Holly two bar, you would select this one and so on and so forth. There's also multiple uh, GM part numbers for naturally aspirated as well as boosted applications. This is a GM. 2.5 bar, I think, don't quote me on this, but I believe this is the LS9 sensor. Now, one of the things that you want to keep in mind is as soon as you select a diff something other than a one bar sensor, uh, the software, the background logic of this sensor is going to want to change some things. It's naturally going to want to change the axes of both your fuel and spark tables. So if we go over here just a little bit, go to the fuel ICF, we see this is a naturally aspirated engine and it has a maximum KPA value of 105, right? So that's basically zero vacuum. So as soon as you go to the sensor ICF and you wanna configure anything other than a one bar sensor, the software is going to automatically ask you if you want to rescale the axes. So be careful with this because if you're starting with a naturally aspirated tune and you tell it yes, here's what happens. We go say yes, and if we go back to the fuel table, now you see this goes up to 285 kPa, which is two and a half bar but none of these numbers have changed. So be careful with that because if the tune that you're starting with is a naturally aspirated and you select a different tune, the fuel flow numbers here are not going to change. So that's just a little bit to watch out for. All right. Um, this is just a number that's used to offset. So for instance, if you know for a fact that your sensor reads a little high or a little low, you could give it an offset here and you can program that in. All right, enough of that. Coolant temp sensor. Um, here's under the drop down menu, you have a G standard GM coolant sen temp sensor. There are several other options. It's interesting that a Chrysler and a Ford coolant temp sensor is listed. Uh, this tells me maybe that at some point the Terminator X software will be available for late model uh, Gen 3 Hemis, as well as Ford Coyote engines. But I don't know that for a fact. I'm just spreading rumors right now. All right, and again here with the offset. Next one up is manifold air temperature. 
Um, I am not sure which sensor exactly Holly means by GMLS mat because if you know anything about LS engines, you'll realize that a lot of the manifold or yeah, manifold air temperature sensors are built into the MAF sensors. So it's very common to see five wire manifold airflow sensors, which the Holly does not use because it's speed density, it, stri it strictly uses a mat MAP sensor for load. Um, but some applications, like as I recall, the fourth gen um, F bodies, they had a three wire MAF and they had an, an extra manifold air temperature sensor that was kind of a plug-in that went into the air intake port. So Holly might mean that sensor. Um, other options here are the Holly manifold air temperature sensor. This is a very common one to use, especially if you're running um, the Holly high ram intake manifold. Uh, the Holly sensor has a 3 8 NPT screw in um, sort of bong, and it fits right into the back of a Holly high ram intake. Um, you don't necessarily have to buy these from Holly, these are very common sensors. Um, the AC Delco part number is 213190. It was used on about a million different GM uh, engines in the late 80s and early 90s. Uh, if you want to look it up, um, 92 Camaro sensor, that should land you that part number. Um, and that's the one to use. That's the one I use in my Cougar because I'm running a Holly um, high ram manifold. Um, so that's it. Now, if you wanted to do a custom one, um, for all of these sensors, there's a custom option. So if you're using some other sensors and you know the output values, um, you know, coolant temp sensors and manifold air temperature sensors, they're thermistors, so they work by altering as the temperature rises. Um, the the, the uh, resistance within the sensor uh, changes and it changes a different value to the ECU. So you're happen to use some sort of different sensor and you have the output values for that, you can program in whatever sensor you want. That goes for any sort of temperature sensors. Uh, so obviously mass air, manifold air temperature also has a custom option. Uh, but I suspect most of you that are running just LS engines with the st standard um, LS sensors, you're just gonna wanna pick these. All right, the next one is the oil pressure sensor. So the Terminator X does have a, um, a plug on the main harness that will plug into the pretty standard three-prong um, oil pressure sending unit. Um, here we're selecting the, the Holly, all the Holly sensors. Uh, they're high quality and they use that same three-prong connector. Um, so there, a lot of these sensors are already pre-programmed in. So you have a choice of 100 PSI or 200 PSI. And again, we see a Chrysler sensor listed here. Um, there's also a GM sensor listed here. Um, be careful here. Um, I think I know which sensor uh, Holly is talking about. Um, this is the one that I use on my, on my Cougar. Uh, but some of the standard... LS sensors only have one wire, and that's not gonna work. You need to have a uh, oil pressure sensor that has three prongs on it. Um, I am using the AC Delco part number D1846A. Once again, D1846A, and that works very well. Lastly, there's a fuel pressure sender. Uh, I happen to use a Holly um, 100 PSI sensor. Again, here you have a, a choice of drop-down menus. And again, if you know the output curve of these sensors, uh, then you can program your own. Um, these are generally five volt sensors, or they're referred to as five volt. In actuality, they're 0 0.5 volt to 4.5 volt, and they have a linear curve, as you see here. Um, one last word about sensors, specifically the oil pressure sensor and the fuel pressure sensors, um, they're very sensitive to engine vibration. Um, so if you think about it, um, you know, GM, uh, when they design the LS engines, they're going into sort of pedestrian um, 
um, cars and trucks and all sorts of things. They have very mild camshafts. There's, there's not a lot of vibration, not a lot of rattling around. When we take these engines and stick them into other vehicles with swap mounts and we start using different camshafts that start vibrating the engine a lot more, uh, these sensors will have a limited lifespan. Um, for instance, the oil pressure sender in my um, Cougar uh, failed after about three years, which you know doesn't sound like a lot, but um, you know they will fail. Same goes for my um, fuel pressure sender. I was actually using a Holly sensor, and it too failed after after about three years, and because it was mounted directly to the fuel rail. One way to avoid that is to remotely mount your sensors. Now it's convenient to mount the oil pressure sending unit obviously on the back of the um, uh, lifter valley cover there where the original sensor goes and I would probably just keep doing that to avoid any sort of complications um, and just just realize the fact that every two three years you might have to spend 20 bucks on a new GM sensor. As far as the fuel pressure goes if you do use a Holly one bar um, or I'm sorry 100 psi sensor I would strongly suggest that you mount it off the rail somewhere. You want to have it as close to the rail as possible but if there's a junction box or some place where you can mount, you know, where your fuel line is coming into the engine compartment, maybe along the firewall, you know, install one of those um, inline fittings that have, you know, if you're using AN lines, you can get an a, a fitting where that has a 1 8 NPT port and a couple of um, dash 6 AN unions and just mount that sensor remotely. That's all I have for today for the sensor ICF and the Terminator X software. Again, if you like this video, please share it. Um, pl pl please hit like, please subscribe to my channel, and I will be making more of these videos uh, in the days to come since I've got some pretty good positive responses. Take it easy, everyone, and I'll talk to you soon.